Do I have any suggestions for an Asavok deck? Ah, oh, ooh. I have tried twice to make Asavok work. I want to say to make Asavok work. What? Well, uh, we have we have an hour. We have an hour. Why don't we do this? Why don't we try and make an Asavok deck work? Because I believe I tried to at one point. If I still have it, I think I got rid of it. Because I was just yeah. Here it is. My Asavok aggro. Uh, I'm I'm getting rid of this. This was such a such a waste. Um. Uh, yeah, I'm not even I'm not even gonna show it. It's just like one of those that I'm like uh, I'm so bad. The way I've uh the way I found that Asavok needs to be played. Do not consider your hero power in any way, shape, or form. Don't do it. Do not do it. Her her hero power is so slow. It is so slow. It takes you two turns to get one card back, and there's not even a benefit from having something under her. Like that, if there was a benefit to having one like a solar or a lunar or something like under her, then I would say sure. But otherwise, it's just it's so slow, not worth it at all. It's just so bad, so bad. Uh, but what I would do here is I would build this in an almost very aggressive format. Um, so you have those. Uh, you're gonna want to put in Blood Moon because uh, you're probably gonna have quite a few buffs. So Blood Moon is going to be clutch. Uh, Reality Rifts because you run buffs. And then... Um, so you can't you can't run combo or uh, Solar Wind with Blood Moon. You can't do that. Uh, you can, however, run Anti-Matter Field or Phase Shift. Now I think Phase Shift is actually going to be fine. I think phase shift is actually a better one to lay, um, because in this, first of all, let's just let's go to the dread, let's go to the death. Yeah, the, the death one's also uh, rigor mortis. Instead of like you you discard the defend cards and then you heal, that's all you get, and that's the only one that's double dread. They have not included other double dread ones, so that's the only one you could run with her, and it's just not worth it. Uh, so right now, let's just look at the death. Uh, for death. What we really want to try and do here is we want to try and just be mildly to majorly aggressive, right? Soul Thief is going to be a good one. Um, Tombstone Carver, is that good? Is that good? Maybe? Actually, now I'm thinking about it. It's like, do we build a gimmick deck? Do we build a gimmick deck? Because there's Celestian Spellbreaker. Where all heroes draw a card face up if it shares a card with the same element. Uh. Oh my god. Do we build a gimmick deck? Do we build a gimmick deck? Maybe we do. Maybe we do. Take phase shift out. Put three of these bad boys in here. Um. Where's the combo that makes it so that we flip our deck upside down? So that we're essentially going to always know what our opponent has on top. anti -matter field. Um, It is a buff, so it can be brought back with Reality Rift. But, uh, yeah, with that, and then in Dread. That was the combos. In Dread, what was the card I was looking for? Tombstone Carver. Tombstone Carver, guys. Whenever a card from another hero is moved to the discard pile, not like discarded from their hand, just from anywhere it's moved, which means the top of their deck, they'll take one. Yeah. Yeah, I think th I think this is fine. Um, we do want our deck to kind of be really heavy on buff because Blood Moon is going to be increased to 13 damage if it's a buff on top. So I think that's perfectly acceptable. Um... Ooh. Okay, now it's, that's way too much into the gimmick. I was going to say, if we put Leaf Leechers in there to start moving cards back from their hand, they have to continuously shuffle their deck so like we can see with Antimatter Field what's on the top of their deck. If we don't want them to draw it, we make them reshuffle their deck. That, that's what I'm thinking. Like, But I'm just like, is that too much of a gimmick? I feel like it is. 
Maybe we put in two of them, take out a Soul Thief and add two. So now how many Dread we have? We have ten Dread. Actually, that's not bad. There's not a whole lot of other Dread cards that I want to add to this, actually. Maybe like Bone Reaper, maybe Gorge, Gorge Stalker, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. All right. Uh, Blinding Beetle, move three attack cards. Yes. Make Just make them reshuffle their deck. Just do it. Uh, Impatient Scholar is just really good card draw, uh, in my opinion. Uh, Prismatic Sunfeeder, we can only have one, but it's going to be a good one. Starhorn Tusker. Is it ever good? I don't think so. Not right now. Um, so what do we have? Ten Solar. Sunplane Charger, I feel, could be good. I feel like it could be good. What do we have for gravity? Let's add our gravity cards in now that we're at 10 and 10. Uh, Wandering Starformer, we are running solar, so this is going to be a really good card for card draw for us. Pathfinder, because we want buff removal at all times. Uh, how does the class for Blood Moon work? I've never seen order symbols as, as costs. Uh, Blood Moon, it is a crossover combo. Basically, this is the uh, symbol for Astral, and this is the symbol for Dread. You can pay any Dread card for this cost, and you can pay any Astral cost for this cost. So as long as it's one Astral and one Dread, you can pay for it. It doesn't matter if it's Death, Shadow, or Poison. It doesn't matter if it's Lunar, Gravity, or Solar. Any Astral, any Dread can pay for those, as long as you have one of each. That's how the cost for those work. Um, okay, so we have... Oh, here's a question. Here's a question. Five damage to all their heroes. So... Okay, with with antimatter field down. Oh wow, would the dread cost count as death then in that case for something like the graveyard? Yeah. Yep. Um so if this if this were on top, this would also be considered lunar even though I don't have access to it, and this would be considered uh dread. Yep. It the dread is counted as death in this case. All right, guys. Now, now stay with me on this. All right, if we, if we energy hoarder, if we energy hoarder, move all of our attack cards to the bottom of the deck, then flip the deck over. Yeah, no problem, man. I'm here. I'm here to answer any and all questions. And then flip the deck over, and then play more attack cards to put them back on the bottom. And then when this gets removed, flip the deck back over, and we have those attack cards again. Is that too much gimmick? How many attack cards do we even have? We have, like, no attack cards. Maybe that's too much gimmick. We have no attack cards. Oh. Uh. Oh, man. I'd, I'd almost have to, like... Oh. I feel like... Okay, I feel like if we did that, we don't do it in an Asavok deck. We do we don't do it in an Asavak deck because there's there's just not there's just not any good dread attack cards. I feel like that's a deck all on its own, which we will build later. I will build that deck later. Maybe on Wednesday when I come back I'll build that deck. But right now I want to try and finish this Asavak deck for you guys. Um, and I think What are we missing? We're missing gravity, right? We're missing like we're missing card draw. Uh, Anti-Gravity Snail could be good. Maybe put two of those in there. Um, two Spectral Guides. So now we're up to an even 10, 10, 10. We really don't even need that much Dread, right? We need a lot of the other ones, because Dread is just... 
I mean, we also don't have a whole lot of healing. Our Soul Thief and our Life Leech are our only healers. Do we take out the Shamblers and put in the... The, uh, the Bone Reapers for healing? I think we do. I think that's a little more acceptable. Mind you, we do have... What, Blinding Beetle is healing? That's really it. That's really it. Um, but I just, I feel like, maybe two of, maybe that's way too much Mimi. I do have to try and win here. How many buffs do I have in this deck now? Because I, I do want buffs on top. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, that's defense, sorry. Buffs. Wow, okay. I need more buffs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight buffs. So if I ever want to get value out of Blood Moon, I need more buffs in here. I really do. Um, I mean, I feel like Sunplane Charger is just a really good one. We're going to have a lot of gravity to go around. Also, if we really need to, Asavok can manipulate the top card. Yeah, I think we get rid of that. Sunplane Charger. Um, yeah, I feel like if we're going to build that gimmick deck, guys, we're going to build it outside of Asavok. Asavok is not the place for it. Um, which then, oh, well, no, we keep, we kept those in there for the Tombstone Carver. Crap! No, there was a reason for those. There was a reason for that in Asavok. I apologize, everyone. There was a reason for the Celestian Spellbreaker. Um, in which case... I'll add in one there... That and that. 10, 11, and 9. That seems reasonable. Seems more reasonable. I feel like Life Leecher... We can trade something out for Life Leecher, right? What do we trade out for Life Leecher then? Maybe we put in a Gorge Stalker. It is healing. I feel like Gorge Stalker would be better. Or maybe, maybe Fallen Guardian. Damage and damage prevention for two future turns. It's either that or just go back with Shambler. Which might actually be better. Shambler is just really efficient. Shambler is just really efficient. Wandering Starformer feels too much. How many buffs do we have now? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12? I feel like all of our solar cards we're going to be using... Like, a lot. We can just add in another Mirror Beast. Mirror Beast is going to be good if we have gravity on the top. It's a deck where we can manipulate if we need to. So that should be fine. Um, 
So the buffs that Reality Rift can bring back in are like Shambler, Sunplane Charger, Tombstone Carver, Bone Reaper, Special Guide. Yeah. Okay, I feel that's fine. We'll try this out. Not saying it'll work. Just saying we'll try it out. Ooh. Now here's the thought. With all the cards, do we actually try and make Battle Priestess work in this? Because Bone Reaper deals damage and heals. Soul Thief deals damage and heals. Uh, we could then switch out the Shamblers for the Gorge Stalkers, which deal damage and heal. Do we battle Priestess? I feel like we could. If we battle Priestess, the Sunplane Chargers are going to come out. Uh, and we're going to put in the um, the Flare Main Prowlers to get additional actions. Uh, we're going to take the Shamblers out. Put in the Gorge Stalkers. Um... Yeah, I feel like Celestian, it's it's got to go. Which means that the uh, the Tombstone Carver, we can toss those. We can add in better Dread cards, uh, such as um. I mean, we can just add in another Soul Thief. Could be fine. Oh! And one Devourer. Can you imagine if we get like a board full of buffs and then Devourer for like 15 and we heal for 15 and Battle Priestess hits for 15? Like if we're able to Reality Rift... Three buffs back, get so many additional actions to just lay a lot of buffs, and then devour them all. That sounds nasty. Yeah, that sounds terrifyingly nasty. So Mirror Beast will take that out. We want to go buff heavy now. Uh, Flare Man Prowler, we're going to want another a third of at least. Ooh, yeah, I'm liking how this is coming out now. So we have card draw, card draw, card draw, card draw. Ooh. I like this. I like this. I like this Battle Priestess plan. What are we at now? We're at 11 gravity. A lot of our gravity we're going to be laying. So, that's actually fine. Uh, Anti-matter field is pretty much going to pay for reality rift now. We're not going to really use that. Uh, it's going to be helped to pay for reality rift. Uh, Enlightenment, Sunstrike won't get in the way. Neither will Blood Moon. Yeah, that's just, that's nasty now. Because, I mean, yeah, if we can set it up where, like, we bring Battle Priest back... The turn afterwards, we lay, like, Bone Reaper, Gorge Stalker, and we just have a really solid turn with Devourer, and it almost becomes, like, an OTK deck. 
And if, if we really wanted to, with her ability, we could make sure that we are um, organizing it so that the right buffs are in the right order. Which means we have to play very, like, very long game. So let me go to the defense. If, if we're doing that... I mean, that's banned. We can't run that at all. What do we have here? Yeah? Oh, we can add one more action. One more action. What do we add? I want to say card draw. I want to say maybe a wandering star former. Or a spectral guide. Probably a star form. We don't want to add another buff in here. Or maybe just a third battle priestess to make sure... To make sure we get it. I feel like two is fine. I think the wandering star former could be fine. In case for some like in case we just really wanted to go aggro. We can deal four damage, use it to draw a card with our solar cards. Um which, actually, we don't have a whole lot of solar cards, do we? We have Impatient Scholar, Blinding Beetle, which we can lay for. Actually, maybe we just tech in... Um, this guy right here, a Vortex Slayer. Draws two cards if gravity's on top, which, from what I'm seeing, is going to be a lot more frequent. And it's elemental buff removal if we desperately need it. Yes. Okay, this feels like a hodgepodge, but I think we're doing it. I think we got it. Third battle, maybe? Maybe. Maybe a third one. We'll, we'll do it. We'll do a third battle. Third battle priestess. Just to make sure we're, we always get it. Yeah, because then, like, even so, we have, like, really good swing turns. If they remove it, they remove it. We can bring it back. But we're not gonna, we're not gonna try and make it so that, like, we always go for the OTK. We're gonna have a pretty substantial board swing turns. Um, just between plays with our Bone Reaper and the Battle Priest, this is a really good play. That becomes a, uh, what, a 12-point swing? We heal for four, we deal eight to them with that one card. That's nuts. Uh, Soul Thief then becomes, we deal six to them and we heal for four. Ooh, shards. That, uh, yeah, I mean, we're always gonna want Battle Priest, it's gonna have a lot of value in this. And then later, if we get those, like, really good buffs. Yeah. Yeah, I like this. I like this a lot. Yeah. Alright, guys. We ready? We're ready to try out this classic format. Asivok. Which I believe is... Okay. What was the... Uh, I'm trying to think. What was the other combo we could have in here? Um, oh, phase shift. Actually, yeah. Phase shift could just be... Nutso. It's, it's like Battle Priestess, but it's just... When we heal, we deal damage. So it could be actually better. And if we do end up playing the long game... Thank you. Thank you. Best of luck. If we do end up playing the long game, Asavok can get back our specific gravity cards to pay for, like, Reality Rift and all that stuff. 
So, yeah. Because I think she can store an action card. Yeah. So, yeah, we can, we can bring back the Battle Priestess if we really want to. We can bring back the Devourer. I think this will be fun. I think this will be fun. Man, part of me wants to add in a Mirror Beast now, but I think that's too slow. I think we do need to draw and be more proactive. Yeah. Alright, guys. Who's ready to try this pile? We got like a half hour till I'm gonna end the stream and I gotta go to bed. So we'll try this. We'll try this deck out. See if it's anything worth a while. But, yeah, guys. Nice little segue here. That's what I'm gonna be doing on my 12 hour stream when my website goes live. Uh, I'm gonna be building decks like this. Random classic format decks to see if they work, see what happens, see what they do. Tweak them for about two hours or so, then go on to another one. Post it to my website, get decks on there so people can go look up deck lists and be like, wow, that seems like a really interesting idea. Build it, try them out, just jump right into the game without seeing here going, i got to study all these cards. But no, 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 we'll have these decks build and ready for you, go right into there. So please, if you have any deck lists that you've been messing around with that you think are fun that you would like to share, please send me that email address right there with your gamer tag, a description of the deck in itself, so that I can get a sense of what you're going for. I can post it to my website, get the deck lists on there for everyone and anyone to see, and we can all have a really fun time with this. That's a bummer. But it is what it is. Okay. Yeah, I think I just want to... I just really want to pass. I just want to pass. That's cool. Uh, I think I can... I'm fine with that. I have a Soul Thief to heal for four. Oh my. I have to move one, right? I'll move that one. You saw me draw it. I'm not using it. I'll just pass. Alright. I, really? I just threw you away. I just tossed Enlightenment away. I didn't want it. I have no solar. What am I to do with stuff like this? Abyss Tentacle. That's one that's going to have to, you know, get out of here. Sorry, but I cannot I cannot do with Abyss Tentacle. Cannot, will not. Now, she's playing Dredge. She's probably going to bring that stuff back. That's what happens. That's what happens. I feel like laying a Tempo Bone Reaper is fine. We have three of them in the deck, if I'm not mistaken. Be just being able to heal for four is really good. Now, Dread is also really buff-oriented, really buff-heavy. Card draw is really nice here. Uh, actually... Do I go for it? Oh, no, I don't. Uh, never mind. I was going to say, do I phase shift to try and get that? But I don't think it's worth it anymore. I could, like, phase shift into some Soul Thief fun stuff. But I don't think it's worth it. I think we're fine. There's a Flare Main Prowler. Get me them additional actions. Corvidus Shade. Very aggressive. Okay. So I think what I want to do here is draw two and probably lay the flare main. Depending on what I draw. Wow, so many soul thieves. That's ridiculous. Um. Now I'm sitting here thinking to myself, do I Gorge Stalker with phase shift? Do I ever do that? I think I, I think I can. I think I can Gorge Stalker next turn. I can phase shift. Uh, and then I can get some really nice spike damage and healing if he doesn't Shadow Puppet or anything like that. Kind of question it. Kind of question that. Toxic Frog. That's pretty toxic. 
Uh, so yeah, I will have to abandon my Pathfinder, which means that frog is gonna hit me no matter what. But, I mean, if he... If he Shadow Puppets, he Shadow Puppets. I'm gonna have to get, like, a shirt that says that. If he Shadow Puppets, he Shadow Puppets. But this could be really good. I could heal for... I mean, I'm gonna Soul Thief definitely, too, with it. There it is! Oh, he always has it. Always has it. Yeah, I mean... He had it. Uh, I feel like we're gonna draw two, and then probably Soul Thief to heal for four. Just because we're, we're gonna be taking quite a bit of pain here. Man, that was a bummer. We could have had a really good play if he didn't kill those. Abyss Shade. See, now she should be using her ability. Like, to rotate this one forward. Hit me for five, six, heal for one. Like, she's got some plays. Uh, I think Bone Reaper into another Soul Thief. So I'm going to take five. I think that's fine. I think that's perfectly fine. Now... I mean, it would have been nice to be able to line up the Battle Priestess and all that stuff, but... You know, you win some, you lose some. Uh, I think... Flare Man Prowler into Battle Priestess and then draw for the next couple of turns. He's at five cards, yes, but his board isn't threatening, and Dread is really someone you have to watch their board with. Dread's board is what you really have to worry about. Like, Dread and Nature, their boards are what... Man, look at that. Three damage every turn, and reduces my healing. I gotta, I gotta kill that. I gotta be able to kill that somehow. Because I cannot have him sit there and reduce my healing all the time. Um, one turn too late. Bummer. Three. I mean, I could spend two turns getting a Pathfinder back. Oh. I think that one Shadow Puppet turn is what killed us. The shad that Shadow Puppet turn hurt us way too much. Um, I mean, I think we just pass. We're going to take three next turn and go to nine. He we could die. Could very well die. Leecher. Move one card back. I, that's fine. We can move that one back. So, let's see here. We have three actions to work with. I think we discarded the draw two. Okay. Um, four damage draw card. There's a reality rift. Uh, and then I think we soul thief. It's gonna kind of stink, but like, the, really, dr we got we got aligned with such a bad matchup. I think dread. Dread really does, like, almost hard counter Astral because of its ability to make it so we can't heal. Yeah. He's gonna rotate that one forward. Yeah, it was just... That was a bad matchup. 
We we stood a chance. Actually, we stood a really good chance if that Shadow Puppet on that turn. But yeah, it did, that was just detrimental. Let's try it again. Let's try it again. Hopefully, we don't get matched up with the same person. But I, I feel like... I feel like this deck has merit. It has some merit. Um... It has really big spike potential. What it doesn't have is a lot of really big spike healing sustain. Uh, Dread doesn't have a whole lot of heals. It used to have... Um... What am I trying to say? Uh, I think we just Flare Man Prowler and pass. I mean, it used to be able to run uh, the... Wow, cannot think of the card. It was a buff... Where you healed for seven. Uh, Soul Trader. It used to have Soul Trader where you could um, lay Soul Trader down and then kill it with like Night Lurker so you could heal for seven and then heal for initial two. Like it had, it had really big burst heal potential, but because there were so many ways to just like let that buff sit on board, it just wasn't good. James Rehab heading off for the night. Great stream. Thanks again for answering my question. Dude, anytime. Feel free to come back. Come back and enjoy yourself. Uh, my schedule's right down below in the panels. I'm live next week, or no, I'll be live on Wednesday at 6. So come back then and enjoy Lightseekers. Build some decks and see what you got to got to show for it, man. I, I look forward to hearing from everyone out there. Uh, I think Impatient Scholaring is fine. Ooh, that's a good one. I think we put it back for 4. And then we Wandering Starformer for 4 and we draw it. Sounds good to me. I think next turn we do just Gorge Stalker and pass. Filthy Phil just finished my placement games. What'd you place? How'd you do? Do you, you make platinum? Late to the party, but I placed bronze. Dude, it's not late at all. Nice job. Nice job. Um, part of me says I do Blinding Beetle here. Uh, I want to try and remove a Crystal Leech. Look at that. And those are probably only two attack cards since it was removed really quickly. Um, that is one nice thing about the digital thing is like those cues can let you play differently compared to if you're playing physically. The, the, the physical game compared to the digital game is just, it's a whole new ballpark. Whole new ballpark out there. Uh, yeah, and I'll attack it for two and draw two cards. How awesome. Kill that mountain fort. Devour and a sunstrike. Okay. Sure. Enchanted Soil. I think that's a decent Pathfinder one, actually. I think that's a good one to just Pathfinder. I, I'm very tempo-based right now. So, having him healing hurts me. Um, he's fire, so mostly he's going to be doing damage in the future. And I need to get my damage in when I can, without him just practically negating it. How many Gorge Stalkers do I... Did I only have two? Wow, and then he heals again. Okay. I feel like two Gorge Stalkers is fine. If I have three, I need to, get, I need to cut three. I need to cut the third. And then I'll pass. He probably also didn't want to even attack me because I was going to be healing for a whole lot. So... I only had two? Okay. Okay, yeah. Gord going three on Gorge Stalker just, it felt really weird. Oh, wow. Is this, is this guy just like super defensive right now? What's going on? 
I think with all of his defenses up, I'm just going to pass and draw. I don't need to be proactive at all. Because, like, he's just going to enchanted soil. He's going to... All this other stuff. There we go. Spectral Guide's really good. Um, part of me also wants to lay the Flare Mane and bait out a Crystal Leech if he has it. And draw. Because, I mean, we're both going to be just drawing. He's going to probably lay an enchanted soil next turn. It doesn't seem like he's ready to fully go at me yet. So I should be fine. Should be fine. Wow, he's not... Okay. He must just be trying to wind up for something big. That seems really weird that he's not doing anything. Um... There's a Blood Moon. I think... I think Pathfindering this is fine. And then passing. Ooh! Another mountain fort, really? Really, dude. So, okay, if, if this is the matchup where we're just going to play slow, then I can just bring back my Pathfinders. I'm okay with that. I am okay with using my ability to bring back Pathfinders. If, if all he's going to do is just play slow, then I will play slow right with him. And with my ability, playing slow is not that difficult. So I think I want to do this. And then pass. Wow, I can even just path find that thing now. Like, he's... What is he... What is he trying to do? Does anyone know... Anyone know what's up? I feel like I should Pathfinder that again. I mean, I, I'm never going to have Lunar other than this combo buff, so I'm never going to be able to get the best value out of Pathfinder. So there's no point in me waiting for two buffs. Really, dude. Really. And a Sky Rider? That just seems weird. I think putting the Devourer under her is fine to get back the, the Pathfinder. Oop. And then Pathfindering this. Wow. If he doesn't damage you, the Battle Priestess is going to go to waste. Yeah, no, I mean... Yeah. I... I Like, this is just... Very defensive. Which makes me think he's like an OTK. Like, I honestly think he's an OTK. Um... I think I just pass. Like, Jnairos... He, he's gotta be looking for something. Skyrider seems very offensive. But then again, Skyrider you can put in the most defensive deck and still use it for offense. It's such a good weapon. Stream of Pantos. Okay. Um. So let's see, I can deal a total of 20 damage. I 
I think Blinding Beetle to just see what he's... He has attack cards. Everrock Relic and Crystal Bat. So, I mean, like, he is offensive at some point. He's got to be. He's, he's got to be just kind of like winding up for something is how I'm feeling. Do I just Blinding Beetle again? Like, at some point I have to start dealing damage to him, right? So maybe I do this. Keep it on top to deal four. I know he's got Enchanted Soils. But, like, if he also runs... Yeah. I mean, if he also runs, um, like, Thunder Slugs and whatnot... Then my, like, buff OTK thing is almost never gonna work. Okay. I mean, I just, I don't, I don't know what he's trying to do, is all I'm saying. He's clearly not damaging me because he knows that I have, like, heal synergy. And he's just playing super defensive. Okay. Okay. That will, that works. Now, I could... I could go for the Gorge Stalker Phase Shift. Synergies here. Which I think I might do. I think I might just do that. He could have another Crystal Leech. I think he's, he's used... No, he hasn't used any. He's just been drawing a whole lot. So I think... I mean, he's got to Crystal Leech this, right? There's no reason for him not to. Or he can Thunder Slug it. There's a... Okay. Okay. He doesn't need a blacksmith anymore, that's for sure. I mean, I just... I, I have so much burst potential, but I know for a fact that he's just got a lot of healing and damage prevention in that deck. I think I Enlightenment right now. Um, so if I, yeah, if I Reality Rift, I get Phase Shift, Gorge Stalker, and Spectral Guide back. None of the ones which I really care for. Wow, I've played a lot of cards, haven't I? There's a Mountain Fort. Like, dude. I almost want to say that I have to Reality Rift here. I still have Battle Priestesses and other things. I mean, I can get them back. But I feel like doing this is fine. I'll draw a card off Spectral Guide. There we go. 
I mean, yeah, if I even want to, I can, um... Oh, I get an additional action. I was like, why did that happen? Uh, I... Th Do I? No, I think that's way too greedy. Because, I mean, I, he's not going to deal damage to me. I think I just use this to draw. Because I'm going to heal for what? Well, I mean, it, I could have still had healing at that, that time. But he's got a Thunder Slug and Crystal Leech. Yep. Yeah, I just... Th this guy is very defensive. And I'm trying to think... What's his win condition? Because if he is just playing Fatigue, then he's just playing Fatigue. And there's not a whole lot I can do about that. That's a bummer. Um... I mean, yeah. Poke it down. I mean, I, I still, like I said, have the potential to do back-to-back -back, uh, 20 damage in two turns. But he's running cards like Boulder Feast. He's probably running cards like Colossi Idol to prevent me from laying combos. This is just a really weird matchup. Gotta say, not a fan... This kind of deck just isn't much fun to play against. It really isn't. I mean, it's 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 along the lines of it's not fun to play against. It's also not fun for streaming. Because, like, all I'm doing is sitting here going, what do I do? I'm not saying it's a bad deck. It's a good deck. I just don't know why people would bring this into casual. This is the kind of deck that you want to, like, methodically think out and play on ladder. Fire bat. Okay. So he's still got probably like two thunder slugs and a crystal leech left. Almost positively. I'll do that. Why not get some four damage in? Try and take this thing away. Uh, yeah, I'll put it back. Try and just get something in there. Next turn we can Bone Reaper, Wandering Starformer. To draw that card. Really? He just does not like buffs. At all. The only thing that would be worse is if they were spamming emotes. Oh no. If they were spamming emotes, I would leave. This is a casual game. I don't have to sit that. I don't know. I do not have to sit there for that. Um. I mean. Yeah, I think I'll just swap these two. Um. Yeah, it'll pass. I think next turn I can Wandering Starformer for that buff back. Put that buff back into play. I mean, we're definitely losing the Fatigue game. Crystal Bat. I think I'll want to heal and then use my ability. Crystal Bat. And Crystal Bat. Okay. I mean, he's he's most likely running cards um, like Shattered Volcano. Mountain just has some really strong burst potential. Still going strong. As he, I, yeah, you, you came in in a really bad game. Like, I was planning on being off by 10, but this is one of those matches that, like, the dude is making it take 45 minutes. Skyrider. Yeah, all he's doing is stalling and using Skyrider. 
That's all he wants to do. That's all he cares to do. Yeah, I mean, if all you're doing is uh, stalling and using Skyrider to just deal four damage, you're going to win. You're you're going to win the long game. Um. Well, okay, I feel a lot better now. He's not classic format. He's running two Geo Hatchlings. You can't do that. Can't do that. Can't run two Geo Hatchlings. Do that. Had some Destiny 2 to run. I hear you, man. Um, from the discard, I think what I'll actually want is a Pathfinder. Swap Pathfinder for the Anti-Gravity Snail next turn. Get that Mountain Fort out of there. He's probably got a third Geode. Crystal Leech. Wow. So this is a very interesting approach to the card battle games. It, it is. TCGs. Trading card game, if you wanna. I mean, he's probably third Geode Hatchling. Okay. Um. How many cards are in my deck? Three? I do still have a Battle Priestess. Okay. I wasn't sure if I did, in all honesty. CCG for online. That's true. Collectible card games. Uh, that's three leeches, yes, but only one Thunderslug. Uh, so... I don't really know what he's gonna have. He probably has a Thunderslug. He has way more cards than I do at this point. Um... No, yeah, dude, it's an amazing game. I love this thing. I've been playing it for a year and a half now. Yeah, there's the Thunder Slug. Like, I'm tempted to just leave and not give him the satisfaction of winning. Just leaving. I'll lay Blood Moon. I'll at least get a combo off. But, I mean, if he... If all he's doing is... Stu yeah, he's got healing and damage, healing and damage. He's just playing the extremely efficient long game with the Sky Rider. I almost want to say that if I had... Uh, if I had the... Make sure I'll keep Soul... Uh, no, I want to keep Soul Thief. If I had the Battleborn Oppressor, this game could have gone a lot differently. Uh, I don't know what Mountain has to really bring weapons back. Got a Sunstrike. So there's really no way to pay for Sunstrike anymore. If he heals again, I'm leaving. If all he's gonna do is heal. Yeah, I'm done. This is not an enjoyable game. Hey, I got a chest in dread. We we will try that deck again, maybe Wednesday. But uh yeah, I mean that that's not a deck you play in casual. That's a deck you climb ladder with. Because it's just it's just really efficient long game. Um Mountain Forts, Geode Hatchlings. It's also not legal in classic format, also. So, there's that. Uh, so, yeah, as soon as January or uh, February comes around, that deck can't be played. Which makes me so happy that decks like that are going to go on the wayside. Super happy. Speaking of which, guys, if you have any classic format decks that you would like to share with me or the community or anyone else, please send them that email address with your gamer tag and a description of what the deck means to you, what why you built it, what it does, just a general concept of it. So when I put it on my website, 
people can look at it, read the concept, and go, oh, okay, I kind of like this deck. I'll see how it goes. Please do that for me. Please do that for everyone out there. The, my website should be up within a week or two. Uh, when my website goes live, I'll be streaming for 12 hours just consistently making classic format decks like that one, like all the other ones that I've done today. I'll just be putting them online for you guys to look at, for you guys to play, for you guys to just read, check out the website. I'll be having promotional stuff probably once a week on the head page, so please keep keep an eye out for that website as well. I want to try and get a lot of traffic, really support this game that way. Um, I had a lot of fun today. I got. I want to thank you so much again, Cowboy Hat Valor, for the $15, month, uh, $15 donation. Ghetto Ford 2 for the 1,000 bits. Umbron House for the sub-tier 1 today. You guys have been amazing. I cannot explain how much that means to me today. This stream has been top-notch. the best stream I've had the entire, like, three months I've been streaming. All the support, all the love from you guys. It's been great. I can't wait to get all this stuff going with you. Please check out my YouTube channel. Subscribe over there. Check uh, A lot of stuff coming once my Twitch stream goes to the uh, later show of viewer to subs only. Check out my YouTube. That's where you'll see all the content and more exclusive non-Twitch content as well. I hope you guys enjoyed yourself today. I enjoyed myself so much. I'm going to get some sleep because i got to get up really early tomorrow and go to work. Thank you guys for tuning in, and I hope you had a pleasant evening. Get those, get those minds crafting, get those classic decks going, and I will see you guys Wednesday. Ciao.